All right, so, are you ready to explore the world of taurine? Definitely. Let's dive in and see what it can do for your body composition and for bodybuilding. Sounds good. We've got some research here. Um, one study from the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Okay. And a systematic review from Frontiers in Physiology. All right. You want to know, can taurine actually help build muscle boost performance and speed up recovery? It's a very popular question. Yeah, it is. And that's what we're here to explore. Yeah. So first things first, let's talk about the results. What can you expect okay. when it comes to taurine for like packing on muscle or just transforming your physique? Okay, well, the research is still developing, but um, okay. there are some promising findings, especially when it comes to muscle recovery. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and that's where the study from the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition really shines. They combine taurine with branched-chain amino acids. BCAA. Yes, BCAAs, and looked at how it impacted muscle damage after intense eccentric workouts. Oh, man, the kind that makes you feel like you can't walk down the stairs for a week. Exactly. And the results were really impressive. Okay. The participants in the study took 3.2 grams of BCAAs plus 2 grams of taurine. Wow. Three times a day. They started two weeks before a hardcore workout and continued for three days after. Okay. And that group, they experienced significantly fewer signs of muscle damage. Oh, wow. And reported less soreness compared to the group who didn't take it. So it's almost like taurine is a shield against that post-workout muscle breakdown. That's a really good way to put it. And, you know, if you think about it, if you're recovering faster, you can theoretically hit the gym more often, push yourself harder, and ultimately that could lead to better gains over time. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's all about maximizing those training windows. Exactly. So this study was focused on preventing muscle damage, not directly on muscle growth. Right. But that's where the Frontiers in Physiology review comes in. Yes, this review gives us a broader perspective on taurine's impact on strength training. And it's really fascinating. Multiple studies have shown that taurine can actually enhance muscle function during your workout. So potentially lifting heavier, squeezing out a few extra reps. Exactly. I like the sound of that. And there's also evidence it can reduce oxidative damage, which is a major culprit behind muscle fatigue. Okay. You know, that feeling of being completely wiped out after a workout. Oh, yeah. There's a 2016 study by Rock et al. that found that taurine helped decrease oxidative stress and even improve something called arterial stiffness. Okay, hold on. Back up arterial stiffness. How does that tie into all of this? That's a great question. So essentially, when your arteries are more flexible, okay. they can deliver oxygen and nutrients to your muscles more efficiently. Oh, I see. Which is really important for both performance and recovery. So it's not just working on the muscles themselves, it's optimizing that support system. Precisely. It's like ensuring all the roads that lead to your muscles are in tip-top shape. I like that analogy. Okay, so this is all super interesting, but I'm dying to know, how does taurine actually pull this off? Right. What's the science behind its muscle magic? The mechanisms are complex and, you know, we're still kind of piecing together the whole puzzle. Sure. But we do have some important clues. Okay. And one key factor seems to be taurine's role in regulating calcium levels within muscle cells. And calcium is essential for muscle contractions, right? Exactly. Without it, our muscles wouldn't even work. Right. And the research suggests that taurine may enhance the way our muscles actually utilize calcium. Okay. Making them more efficient. A 2015 study by DeLuca et al. Okay. Found that when taurine levels were reduced by 50% in mice, their muscle force and calcium sensitivity significantly decreased. So it's not just about having enough calcium, it's making sure your muscles can actually use it effectively. Absolutely. And taurine is a key player in that process. It is, but it's not just about calcium. Okay. Taurine is also a really powerful antioxidant, meaning it helps protect your muscle cells from the damage caused by those intense workouts. Gotcha. A 2004 study by Zhang et al. showed that taurine supplementation reduced exercise-induced oxidative stress. Okay. And even boosted exercise performance in a group of young Men. It's like a two for one deal, better muscle function and protection from damage. Yeah, you could say that. Sign me up, but. Well, hold on. Before you run off and buy a tub of taurine, we need to talk about how much to take. Yeah, good point. What's the magic number? Unfortunately, there's no single answer. Okay. It depends on individual factors, training intensity, body composition, and your goals. Makes sense. Researchers are still working on that optimal dosage. So, no magic number just yet. But what does the research suggest so far? Well, the muscle damage study we discussed used six grams of taurine per day split into three doses. Okay. And that proved effective for reducing soreness. Right. 
However, the Frontiers in Physiology Review suggested that for endurance training, you might need closer to 5 grams daily. And when it comes to strength training specifically, the ideal dose is still a bit of a mystery. So those could be good starting points, but it's crucial to do your research and talk to a healthcare professional. Absolutely. Before adding taurine to your routine, they can figure out what's best for you based on your individual needs and history. For sure. Personalized guidance is key. And speaking of personalized guidance, I'm curious about the different forms of taurine available. Yeah. We talked about powders, capsules, but what are the pros and cons of each? Great question. So powders are often more budget friendly. Okay. And they give you more flexibility. You can mix them into drinks or smoothies. True. And if the taste isn't too strong, you can even sprinkle them on food. Okay. But capsules definitely win in the convenience department. Oh, for sure. Especially if you're always on the go or if you just don't love that taurine taste. Exactly. With capsules, you've got pre-measured doses. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about scooping or mixing. Right. They're also portable and discreet. Just pop a few in your bag and take them whenever. So it sounds like choosing between powders and capsules comes down to personal preference, lifestyle. Yeah. And of course, your healthcare provider's recommendations. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about something that's super important with any supplement, potential risks and side effects. Okay. The research on taurine seems pretty positive so far, mm -hmm. but we got to be aware of any possible downsides. Of course, even natural substances can have interactions right. or cause unexpected issues for certain people. This is another area where talking to your doctor is crucial can help you weigh the potential benefits against those risks, right. making sure you're making informed decisions about your health. So it's all about that personalized risk-benefit analysis. Exactly. Were there any side effects reported in these studies we discussed? So the good news is that in the studies we looked at, no serious adverse effects were reported from the taurine supplementation. It's generally considered to be safe when taken in moderate doses. However, it is worth noting that some people might experience mild gastrointestinal discomfort. Okay. Like an upset stomach when they first start taking it. Ah, oh, yes, the dreaded supplement stomach. Yeah, it's not fun. Not fun. But starting with a lower dose and gradually increasing it over time can often help to minimize those initial digestive issues. Good tip. And as always, staying well hydrated is a good idea, especially when you're introducing any new supplement. Hydration is key for so many aspects of health and performance. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's get back to the muscle building aspect of taurine. We talked about its potential to enhance recovery and maybe even indirectly support muscle growth. Right. But is there any evidence that taurine can directly stimulate muscle growth itself? That's where things get a little bit more complicated. Oh. The direct link between taurine and muscle protein synthesis, yeah. which is the process of actually building that new muscle tissue, okay. is still an area of active research. So the jury's still out on that one. It is. But as I mentioned earlier, research on taurine is constantly progressing. Yeah, good. There are a lot of brilliant minds exploring its potential. Yeah. It's entirely possible we'll have more definitive answers in the near future. Fingers crossed it'd be amazing to unlock even more of taurine's benefits. I agree. And speaking of unlocking benefits, I read that taurine might have some positive effects beyond muscles. Yes. Is there any truth to that? There is some research suggests that taurine might play a role in regulating blood sugar levels. Interesting. And potentially even improving cognitive function. Wow. So it's not just about physical performance. <laughs> it could have a positive impact on overall health. Yeah. That's what makes this research so fascinating. Taurine is a naturally occurring substance. Right. Our bodies already use it, and it seems to have a surprisingly wide range of potential benefits. It's incredible how much one little molecule can do. So while we wait for more research on those potential benefits, okay, let's talk about something that's probably on everyone's mind. Yeah. We've mentioned that taurine is naturally found in some foods. Yes. So is it possible to get enough taurine through diet alone, or do you need a supplement? That is a fantastic question. Well, it's definitely possible to get taurine through your diet, okay. especially if you're including some key sources in your meals. Okay, so spill the beans. Yeah. What foods should we be loading up on? Animal products are really the stars here, okay. particularly seafood and meat. Okay, so for the meat lovers out there, what are we talking specifically? Beef, chicken, pork, even dark meat turkey yep. all have decent amounts of taurine. Gotcha. And for seafood, I'm guessing shellfish are a good bet. Clams, mussels, oysters, scallop, they're all packed with taurine. Other fish like tuna salmon and cod, they also have a decent amount. There's a pretty good variety for people who enjoy their meat and seafood. Yes. 
But what about for people following a vegetarian or vegan diet? Are there any plant-based sources of taurine they can rely on? That's where things get a little tricky. Uh oh. Plants, unfortunately, don't contain significant amounts of taurine. So for our plant-based listeners, it sounds like supplementation might be necessary to reach those optimal levels. Yeah, that's a possibility. And it's something they should definitely discuss with their doctor or a registered dietitian. Mm -hmm. They can help assess their individual needs and make recommendations based on, you know, dietary preferences and overall health goals. That makes sense. It's always about finding what works for each individual. Absolutely. Now, I have to ask about those energy drinks that always seem to advertise taurine. Yeah. Are they a reliable source? Well, energy drinks often contain taurine, yeah. but I wouldn't recommend relying on them as your main source. They also tend to be loaded with sugar and other ingredients that might not be the best for your health and fitness goals. Yeah. Plus, those energy drink crashes are brutal. Exactly. You want sustained energy, not that roller coaster effect. For sure. Okay. So back to the food front. Okay. Is there anything you can do to boost taurine levels in the food you eat? Like, does the cooking method matter? It's an interesting question. Yeah. So while cooking itself doesn't create taurine, some methods might actually help preserve more of it. So what's the best way to cook those taurine-rich foods? Should we be breaking out the slow cooker? I'd say gentle cooking methods like poaching, steaming, or baking are probably your best bet. So maybe avoid those super high heat methods like frying or grilling. Yeah, those could lead to more nutrient loss overall. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive into the world of taurine. It has. We've covered so much from potential benefits, yeah. mechanisms of action, dosage considerations, different ways to take it, even the importance of dietary sources. It's been a pleasure exploring this topic with you. Absolutely. But before we wrap up, I want to emphasize that this is just the beginning of our understanding of taurine's potential. Of course. Research is ongoing, and I have a feeling we'll be hearing a lot more about this molecule in the years to come. I agree. The future of taurine research is really exciting. So if there's one key takeaway our listeners should remember from this deep dive, what would it be? I would say stay curious, stay informed, and be proactive about your health and wellness. I love that. If you're interested in taurine, talk to your doctor or a registered dietitian. Yeah. They can guide you through the latest research and help you make informed decisions that align with your own needs and goals. That's a perfect note to end on a huge thank you to our amazing expert for joining us. My pleasure. And to all our listeners for tuning into this taurine adventure. Thank you. Until next time, keep those brains hungry for knowledge, and we'll see you on our next deep dive. See you then.